Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. So today we are working on the Bluetooth vintage headphone conversion. And uh, this is an earmark headset from uh, around, I, I want to say early 1980s. I wasn't able to uh, date it exactly, but uh, certainly from uh, right around there, based on the construction design and electronics that were inside. Uh, so there's a blog post uh, which I'll link to down in the description for the complete uh, build log of uh, this device. But uh, right now uh, we're going to go over how I uh, resin casted copies of these uh, end caps here. These are actually the battery compartments and I wanted to put uh, controls uh, inside here for uh, you know, for my Bluetooth conversion uh, without actually ruining the originals. Uh, unfortunately, as you'll see over here, I wasn't actually able to do that. Uh, the resin casting didn't work out and it ended up modifying the original part anyway. Uh, but I thought it was an interesting process uh, that I would show you. Uh, so let's dive in. Okay, so we start by making the uh, silicone mold that's going to form our uh, part. And I'm doing that here with some pieces of scrap melamine board and hot glue. This works well because the melamine has a very smooth surface and uh, helps uh, create a nice mold. And the hot glue also doesn't uh, stick to it that well. So you got to make sure to seal up all the joints so the silicone won't leak. Now the uh, form here that I have is the original part. Uh, it's going to be suspended by that scrap of wood. And then those chopsticks on the sides form uh, keys. And uh, you'll see how that works in a minute. And then the whole thing is uh, sprayed with mold release just before putting it in. Okay, now we're going to mix up our silicone here, and uh, this is a two-part, uh, the pink and the blue. Uh, this is Umu 30 that I'm using, and uh, this actually worked out really well for me, so I would recommend this. You just mix up equal parts of it, which is uh, pretty visually satisfying stuff. And then we just give it a real thorough stir, basically until it's a uniform color. It's sort of a, a dull gray when you're done. Uh, because of the two colors, it's really easy to see when uh, the mixing is complete. And then we just pour it into our mold. And uh, the trick here is to pour into one corner, let it self-level, and pour very, very slowly so that uh, air bubbles don't form. If you pour slowly, that thin stream causes the bubbles to burst as they uh, come down and they don't end up in your mold. So I'm pouring the bottom half here, the mold line that I've decided is sort of the, half, uh, the halfway point of that uh, part there. And then after it cures, uh, we sort of wiggle our uh, structure out of there, our form uh, piece. The trick is to break the suction without damaging the silicone, so take your time. You can see the keys there that were formed by the chopsticks. Then we spray that all with mold release so that the two mold halves won't stick to each other. Make sure that uh, part is covered as well. And then we pour more silicone into the top of it. And this is going to form the top half of the mold. Again, pouring very slowly to try and keep air bubbles from getting in there. You can also use a vacuum chamber to evacuate the air after doing this, but uh, I found that just pouring very slowly worked really well. Okay, and after curing, we pull our mold apart and see how we did. So far, it's looking really good. I used a razor blade to just kind of break that uh, skin around the outside. The parts are separate because of the mold release, but the skin around the outside kind of bonded to itself a little bit. So I just break that with the razor blade. And in the moment of truth, try to do this as carefully as possible. You can see my mold keys didn't really work out, but otherwise the uh, mold looks really, really nice. Pull the uh, part out of the other half. And I got one air bubble in the bottom there, but otherwise uh, it turned out beautifully. I'm very, very happy with how this mold came out. So now I just need to cut a hole in the top for pouring and for an air vent, as you can see there. And uh, some boards and some rubber bands hold it together. Just tight enough to make it watertight, but not enough to distort the mold. 
And then the two part resin has been mixed up there. And then again pouring this in uh, slowly to try and uh, avoid air bubbles. And here's another good trick. Periodically while filling the mold, uh, stop and roll it around and that really uh, really helps get rid of the air bubbles and make sure that the resin gets into all the pockets and stuff. This is a 24 hour curing resin so you've got plenty of time. And once it's full and it's coming out of the uh, air vent then uh, you know you're done. And leave it for 24 hours to cure. Moment of truth, we see if it actually worked. Pull our mold apart carefully here and see how we did. That looks pretty good. Now the part actually came out perfectly. Uh, there's almost no air bubbles in it and uh, the mold worked perfectly. The only problem that I really had was that the resin didn't cure. And uh, you can see it's the perfect shape. Uh, the part came out beautifully but it's uh, it's just kind of still rubbery and uh, I'm not sure if I didn't mix the hardener well enough or if I didn't use enough hardener you know I measured and everything but uh, otherwise uh, it worked out really well so I'll probably try this process again and uh, maybe I'll have better luck next time so thanks very much for watching uh, support me on patreon if you haven't already and thanks to all my patrons who make these videos possible we'll see you next time